you'll be able to tell your kids where you were when the United States dollar changed forever. We just saw the last gasp of the U.S. dollar. In 20 years, you'll be able to look back at this Labor Day weekend and see the exact moment everything changed. It's historic and not in a good way that the U.S. economy is grinding to a halt. I think the U.S. economy is slowing faster and in a broader sense than most people anticipated, including the Fed. And I think that the market is catching up to that possibility, which has become a probability. Mohammed El Aryan is exactly right. And it's all being controlled by a globalist cabal of elites that wants Kamala Harris elected right now. So right now, as we speak, we are watching the single biggest shift for the U.S. dollar hegemony in the past 80 years. Over the next few weeks, the plan will be put fully into action. The massive dumping of U.S. dollars flooding the market, bank collapses, job losses, which we're seeing by the millions, by the way, and skyrocketing inflation that no amount of lying will hide. I'm looking at you, Kamala Harris. No. <laughs> So let's get into it. There are a few big pieces of news that I want to get to right now that everyone better pay attention to. And most people have been ignoring. Most of you, of course, were hard at work last week trying to provide for your families going about your day. You certainly weren't paying attention to Fed Chief Jerome Powell up there in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Well, he dropped an economic bombshell on America. Powell admitted that the jobs market is in real trouble. Consumer spending is down. And he openly admitted that the Fed is now pivoting. Quote, the time for pivoting our policies is upon us. The cooling in labor market conditions is unmistakable. So with those words, he sent gold skyrocketing to all-time highs, the U.S. dollar plunging to its lowest point of 2024 with just one sentence. It all it took was one sentence. He hasn't even cut rates yet. This was just one sentence. Unbelievable. As trends forecaster Jared Salenti just told me, we are already in a recession and the coming crash is going to be worse than anyone wants to admit. They want to keep the people in power in power. Simple as that. They're running the show right in front of your eyes. They're going to lower interest rates and do everything they can to boost up the economy. The lower interest rates fall, the deeper the dollar declines. The dollar is only high because of the high interest rates. So again, the deeper the dollar falls, the higher gold prices go. Gold prices could go to $3,000 an ounce this year. I mean, we can haggle over whether it's a recession or a depression, but it's already here and it's about to get much worse. New data this week from businesses all over the United States telling the Fed that Americans can't afford shit thanks to Biden and Harris's economic policies. Quote, our data supports the thesis that consumer spending is paring back materially. We will start seeing significant negative impacts to our business if spending continues to decline at the current rate through the end of the year. In other words, Americans are tapped out. No savings left, huge amounts of credit card debt, no expendable income to go to the movies, to go to the mall. Instead of getting new clothes for back to the school time, sorry kids, you'll need to wear last year's clothing. Don't believe me? Well then believe the sales at Dollar General. The freaking dollar stores are hurting. New data out today from Dollar General shows shares crashing 26%. 26% why? Now the store admits that its core customer, its bread and butter, feel financially constrained. And the store is desperate. This weekend they rolled out a 91% clearance sale to try and lure in customers into the stores. 91%, even with that 91% off, Americans still aren't shopping like they used to. So now the Fed is going to slash rates likely four times in the next few weeks and the next few months. Four rate cuts. But it's too little too late, as Jeremy Siegel says. The honeymoon is over for the Fed. The honeymoon is over. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, Jay Powell and, and Fed enjoyed this idea that, uh, you know, we can bring inflation down, no uh, real consequences. We can wait and wait and wait. Well, uh, I think he waited too long. And, you know, there isn't some magic bullet that's going to put more money into people's wallets, especially if they've lost their jobs. I mean, sure, reduce inflation would help. You know, prices about everything have gone up over 20 percent, even 30 percent. But that's not going to happen because now that Powell is slashing interest rates, the U.S. dollar will be devalued even further. Just so you understand, in the U.S., there is $6.2 trillion sitting in money market accounts. That's an all-time record. Normally, it's about $1 trillion because up until now, the U.S. dollar has been an attractive investment against other currencies, against the euro and other currencies around the world, but not anymore. As soon as Powell slashes interest rates, that money will leave those money market accounts. 
In other words, that's literally selling U.S. dollars. And all of this cash is going to hit the American market, making inflation far worse. But don't worry, Kamala Harris has a plan to help. Even though she's currently responsible for this disaster, she's pretending like she's not currently in power. Her plan is to print trillions more in U.S. dollars, put in place price controls, give people free housing, and tax unrealized capital gains. When her top economic advisor appeared on CNBC this week to try to explain how taxing money that you don't have would work, well, it didn't end well for him. Oh, unrealized gains, taxing unrealized gains just doesn't seem fair in any sense of the word. But in the I, very I, best, sense, it, in the very look, best I, sense, if you were taxing unrealized gains, all you're doing is pulling forward the taxes that would be paid later when someone actually sells the stock. I, I, I think that this reaction to unrealized gains is a little funny, given that I bet that the majority of people watching right now are already paying a tax on unrealized gains. It's called a property tax. Property tax. When the value of your home goes tax. up, that's an when, old. It's a use tax. When, when, when the value of your home goes up, you pay it's higher tiring. taxes, even if and you don't sell your go, home. It, your value of your home never moves the way the the stock same. moves. The way something. That's else always moves the go-to answer. Sell. These are the clowns trying to run America into the ground, folks. They are fools. But it doesn't stop there. New data out this week shows just how many pieces of merchandise are not being shipped out of America. Our trade deficit. As economist Peter Schiff points out, quote, the non-COVID reopening record high July merchandise trade deficit reveals the true state of the United States economy. It's a complete disaster, he says. If currency traders understood economics, the dollar would be crashing. It eventually will, taking the U.S. standard of living down with it. He's absolutely right. In other words, imagine you have a lemonade stand. You also like to buy snacks from your friend's stand that's nearby. If you buy $10 worth of snacks from them, but they only buy $6 worth of lemonade from you, you end up spending $4 more than you earned. That's a $4 trade deficit. It's exactly the case for the United States. It means the country is spending more money on products made in other countries like cars, clothes, electronics, than it is making by selling American-made products to other countries. The merchandise trade deficit is just a fancy way of saying that the United States is buying up way more stuff from other countries than it's selling to them. And we're just days away from the first Fed rate cut. All the warning signs are here, folks, of a major U.S. dollar meltdown. And the mainstream media, of course, is going to try and hide it in order to get Kamala Harris elected. No. <laughs> They'll tell you, as they've already been telling you, it's not that bad. You're not really suffering. You're not spending more money on things. Your life is fine. They're literally lying to you. It's the perfect time right now for them to try to sell you a digital dollar that will solve all of your problems. It is coming, folks. Pay attention. So that's the news update part of today's video. Now I want to tell you about today's sponsor, which is tied directly to what we were just talking about and quite possibly the cheapest gold exposure that we can get our hands on right now, as of today, anywhere in the world. So that company is Gold Mining Incorporated, trading on the New York Stock Exchange. They're a New York Stock Exchange company. Here's their ticker on your screen. You'll see why I call this a rare moment for us right now, especially those of us that believe in investing in real tangible assets like real estate, gold, silver, precious metals. Again, real things, not this phony fake U.S. dollar debt bubble that we're about to see. So the reason this is a rare moment is because it all has to do with what's about to transpire in two weeks sharp from today. The Federal Reserve is not going back on its word. On September 18th, the chairman of the world's most important banking institution is forecasted to come to the podium and announce the committee is certain that a rate cut is warranted, they will tell us. The futures contracts already project a 100% chance of a rate cut. Take a look. I like those odds, 100% chance of a rate cut. At present, the bond futures show that the Fed funds rate will be 4.5% by the end of 2024. Take a look. I don't think that there's ever been a better moment to build a position in gold and gold companies than in September of 2024. That is my personal opinion, and one of the key reasons for forming this view is that today gold is trading at $2,519 an ounce. But... On the GDXJ, which is the index which aggregates select junior mining gold stocks, it sits at $45. That's compared with $167 back in 2011 when gold peaked at $1,925 an ounce. It is indisputable. Gold spot price is $2,519 an ounce, as I record this, over 31% above the 2011 all-time high. And yet the GDXJ index is down 72% compared with its peak from 2011. It's not just gold's performance, which makes me appreciate 
which could be sitting in front of us right now, the United States dollar just hit its low for 2024. So if you zoom out a little bit, you can clearly see the DXY index, which measures the dollar's strength, peaked in October of 2022, right when the GDXJ index bottomed. So let's take a look to see the entire landscape from the highest point of view here. Okay, so number one, on September 18th, the Federal Reserve is slated to begin a rate cutting cycle, as Powell clearly said at Jackson Hole. So an era of rate cuts are coming. Number two, gold spot price is trading at an all-time high, 30.8% above its 2011 high. And yet, the GDXJ Mining Stock Index is 72% below its 2011 high. And number three, the DXY Index, which measures the USD's bull and bear cycle, peaked in October 2022 and has since declined by 10.8% and is now at 2024 lows for the US dollar. Meanwhile, Gold Mining Incorporated, the company we're talking about today, is trading at five-year lows right now. In the previous instances where Gold Mining Inc. showed so much promise and we covered the potential breakouts for it at the time, here's what happened next. So in 2015 to 2016, that was December 15th to July 8th of 2016, there was a 525% increase. And then in 2019 to 2020, that's May 24th to August 20th, a 400% increase. And the market cap of Gold Mining Inc. today is $153 million with no debt and $12 million in cash. Look it up and you can study it for yourself. Now, when the company originally acquired their dozen gold projects, the combined market cap of those companies that held them at their peak was $850 million. Just so you understand, those same gold projects that were $850 million back in 2011 are only $153 million USD in 2024. And the gold spot price back then was $1,925. And right now, it's $2,519. So Gold Mining Inc. acquired them in a bear market for only $81 million, the projects that I'm talking about, those gold projects, $81 million back in a bear market. To me, this is an open and shut setup. This is a snapshot right now of Gold Mining Inc.'s value proposition. I want to recap it in less than one minute for you, just so you understand my level of conviction on this company. Market cap is $153 million. They have zero debt. And here's what the market is pricing for $59.5 million at today's stock price for Gold Mining Inc. Look at this. I mean, what are you looking at here? Gold Mining Inc. owns a total of 11 projects containing 12.5 million ounces of gold equivalent resource in the measured and indicated category and an additional 9.7 million ounces of gold equivalent resources in the inferred category. The value that the market is ascribing to these resources is $61 million. Can you do the math? on how much this comes out to per ounce of gold. So a shareholder of Gold Mining Inc. at today's price is getting GLDG at its five-year lows and then indirectly enjoys exposure to GROY and USGO near their all-time lows as well. Right before the Fed is about to announce a rate-cutting policy, which is slated to begin in a few days. So in other words, a shareholder of Gold Mining Incorporated is getting a portfolio of 11 gold projects in the two categories of resources containing 12.5 million gold equivalent ounces and an additional 9.7 million inferred for 61 million USD. So in 2011, these 11 gold projects were owned by other companies before Gold Mining Inc. acquired them for $81 million Canadian in a bear market. Their combined market cap was $850 million. So don't say you didn't know about this, okay? I'm giving you guys this information. I want you to do your own homework on this. Do your own due diligence on this company. Dive into their financials, okay? It's all public. They're a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. Here's their ticker on your screen once again. But look at these numbers. Uh, I think you will see what I see. And uh, our thanks to them for sponsoring this news update. And we will see you next time, everyone.